Okay, so this is the second dream that I'm going to interpret um, of Sister Donna. And if you have not seen the Trees of Light and the Father of Light interpretation, I suggest that you first go to that video um, and, and watch that before you watch this one. And so let's just continue. This one, as I said, is more focused on the persecution that will come as well and the disposition that is required of us. So this, um, as you can see by the thumbnail, this uh, dream that Sister Donna had is called the Flipping Tables Like Jesus. Okay, so let's just read her dream as well. In this dream, I'm in a beautiful pale Cadillac. It is from the year 1960. It is beautiful and there's not a speck of dust on this car anywhere. It's beautiful. I pull up in the driveway of a church and I notice that the steps of the church are three and they are made of oak. But I can tell that the steps are older than the porch itself. So I jump to the porch and I can see the two windows on each side of the door of the church. When I go inside, there are a lot of tables set up and they are buying and selling in the house of God. I turn over the tables and I am mad at the woman. The church is full of women. There are no men there, only women. And I'm mad at the woman for buying and selling in the house of God. There are huge golden coins on the table. And those coins roll across the floor as they are following the first coin. They are not sliding. They are not rolling on their sides as if they are rolling on their sides as if they are following each other. And I say to the woman in front of me, if I had a whip, I would whip you. And I look to my right hand and there is a whip in my right hand and I'm about to raise it up and hit her with the whip. But I say to the woman, I'm going to have mercy on you. This time I will have mercy on you. And I turn to go out the door and there is a woman leaving and she has a blue blanket the same color as my Cadillac. And I tell her, that blanket belongs to me. You stole my blanket from me. You stole what my father, my heavenly father gave to me. You had to steal it. And I say to the woman, if you would have asked me, I would have given it to you. But you had to steal is that the only way you can get gifts from God? Is to steal them. To take them from those who have received gifts from God. I tell the woman, you can have the blanket. She throws the blanket down on the floor and goes out the door. And for some reason, I leave the blanket behind and I get back into my beautiful Cadillac. And my son is in the back seat and he wants to get out of the car. And I tell him, he cannot get out of the car. He's going to stay in the car with me. But he wants out. And he asks me a question in the car. He says, was it worth it? And I say, yes, it was worth it. It was worth it. Now we are getting back on this narrow road. And on this road, there are trees on each side, almost like a fence being thick and tall. And all I can see is green. And down the street, I hear a commotion. The people start running towards me, but they are running past the car. And now I know what they are running from. Not running, but walking towards the car is a black horse and a rider in black on the horse. And he goes to my window and I'm on the passenger side in the car and he leans down to look into my face and when I look into his face I am not afraid of him and I see his face it is a skeleton a white skull and I know that this rider is face is facing the north and that he is preparing to ride towards the north so that is her dream that she had so let's go to the interpretation this dream is about those who covet the gifts and the calling of those anointed by God to stand in office and their fate 
if they continue to traffic with the gifts of God. So warning. The dream is divided into three sections. Riding in style to the church, flipping the tables and the black horse rider. Riding in style. The blue Cadillac, Cadillac of the year 1960 points to your ministry. The numbers 19 to 60 should be looked at separately. Strong's 19 means goodness of excellent report. And Strong's 60 comes from the word agora and it means relating to the marketplace, forum or public place of assembly, a place of public resort. In other words, in the public's eye. In summary, the light blue Cadillac is your ministry or calling. The light blue color points to the heavenlies and the fact that you have been given an open door to see in the heavenlies. The car, which is your ministry, is open for all to see. You are open to the marketplace, that is to say, on open display. You are riding in style which speaks of the excellent report you have as someone who shows kindness and is upright. Driving the Cadillac also speaks of God's favor on you. You are in business with God. Now to number two, flipping the tables. The three steps leading up to the church door represents the foundation of the church. Ephesians 2.20 talks about this foundation and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Okay, so we built on this foundation. The three steps represents the foundation, which is the apostle, the prophets, and Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. They are made of oak, pointing to that which is lasting or ancient truth. Oaks are also fire resistant, pointing once again to endurance or standing the test of time. You also jump to the porch, careful to not step on these three steps. This points to your reverence to the pure word and the true gospel as foundation. Isaiah 1 12 says where the Lord speaks to Israel and how they've been fornicating and doing all the religious stuff, but their hearts are far from him. He says, when you come to appear before me, who've required this at your hand to tread my courts, that tread is to trample my courts. How dare you just come into my courts with your hearts the way they are. However, what you find inside the church does not honor that foundation. Here another gospel is preached. The reason why you only see women and not men is because the church is referred to in the feminine, the bride of Christ. However, when we look at the word woman in the Strong's Concordance, it means adulteress. A woman is referred to as unfaithful, which points to the heart's deceitfulness to wander off to other lovers. In this case, covetousness is the sin of adultery, spiritual adultery. They are buying and selling or trafficking within the church. The big size of the golden coins points to the size of their covetousness. The coins on their sides rolling and following those before them points to the sheep following the sheep or those like-minded following one another seeking their own gain. This immediately made me think of Judas who sold his savior for 30 shekels which was not only coveting money but adulterous in that Mammon was his master. Judas was coveting or lusting after money but what are these women or this church lusting after? When you spoke to the woman in anger and were flipping the tables over, you were acting in the office you are called to, which is to be the mouthpiece of God. The prophet is not only required to speak, but at times to act as well, literally upsetting the apple cart, if you will. The whip in your right hand speaks of the authority given to you to judge as his mouthpiece. The right hand speaks of strength and authority. 
And when you told the woman that you are extending her mercy, it was in fact Christ in you extending mercy to those who will hear this message and repent of the secret envy or coveting within their hearts. He is faithful to forgive us of all our unrighteousness when we repent. The question we need to ask is, what are they selling and buying? The answer lies in the stolen blanket. This is twofold. In the same way that Elisha asked Elijah to throw his mantle on him, representing Elijah's anointing, so this blanket points to the call and anointing upon your life. People are envious and covet the call, the blanket or Cadillac of those in office. They too want to experience various spiritual encounters and be called a prophet or apostle of God. Accompanying the anointing are the gifts he gives to, the, to minister to the church. So they are trafficking in the church with the anointing and the gifts of the Spirit. They covet it. This we find in various books, courses and meetings where the sheep are lured to get their next spiritual experience, self-help books and training in the gifts of the Spirit with the church meetings that emphasize great encounters in His presence. This is a form of spiritual lust and it is very subtle and it masquerades as being hungry for God but in fact is coveting the things of God and not God Himself. It is spiritual adultery at a price, and this price comes as X amount of money, usually huge amount of money to go to these courses and get these various experiences. You, on the other hand, are doing business with God versus them doing business with man. A different cost involved. The one is financial, the other one is spiritual. The woman throwing the blanket on the ground Point to the utmost disrespect for the position and mantle you hold in your office, as well as to the person of the Holy Spirit. After all, prophets are now a dime a dozen. You are very angry with her stealing the blanket. This stealing is referring to those who are not called to the fivefold office, but say they are. They are thieves and they steal from the flock as well both financially and spiritually. You telling her that you would have gladly given her the blanket if she but asked is in context with Paul who went about to pray for those who have not received the gift of the Spirit as yet. We read that in Acts 19 verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Of course, we are not to just lay hands on anyone. But the context of the dream is that if we but only ask, our Father in heaven will give that which we need, which is the Holy Spirit, that you read in Luke 11 verse 13. This is why you told her she only needed to ask. You leave the blanket there is showing that for you, the giver of the gifts is by far more important to you than the gifts, which is the opposite of these women. They covered the calling and the gift. When you get into the car, you demand that your son stay in the car. Taking into account that the Cadillac represents your ministry, your son represents Yeshua, the son. You are adamant that he is going nowhere and staying in that car no matter what. He is going with you. He can take anything away from you, but not his presence. When he asked you whether it was worth it, you said, yes, it was worth it, twice. Affirming it twice, which once again points to your true disposition that is required of all those in ministry, as was expressed by Paul in Philippians 3. Verse 8, Paul says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. Now those things that he count loss was his whole list of everything that he said of how righteous he was and lived before the Lord. Right? Everything that he went through. He says he counts all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So the true disposition is not to covet the gifts, but the giver. 
willing to give everything up, count it all loss, if you can only but have him. Okay, number three, the black horse rider. Now you are driving down a narrow road in the passenger seat. A narrow road speaks of not taking the easy way out and that you have paid a dear price on your journey, willing to pay the price of following him, which is not bought with money. The tall trees represent both his favour and how green they are, as well as a hedge of protection around you and your ministry. It is then that you notice the people running past the car in fear of the approaching black horse rider. The fear of the people speaks of their fate. Remember, these are those from the, in the church now running. This is linked to the black horse rider in Revelation 6. So let's read about him, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld... And lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Note, here the rider has scales in his hands, measuring the value, the weight of wheat and barley with a penny. This once again brings, us up, brings up the issue of money. It points to a time of famine, but also a famine of the word of which the wheat and barley is a type and shadow. It also points to faith, because faith is as a seed, and Yeshua said that people's hearts will faint because of the things that they will see coming upon this earth. This is why Yeshua asked, shall I find faith when I return? There will be a famine of faith by this time, and we know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Interestingly enough, the oil and wine, apart from its literal sense, are also a type and shadow of the calling and spirit upon those set apart unto him. The back, black horse rider is said not to hurt them. This explains why you are not afraid of this rider, even if he looks like a skull. The reason for this is because on your journey, you have been in business with God. And though poor on earth, you have a bank account in heaven full of gold. You have no need to fear the coming famine because you have invested in heaven's bank that pays richly with great interest. Matthew 19, verse 9, from verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thief breaks through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor dust corrupt, and where thieves do not break the, through nor steal. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Herein lies the crux of the matter, which is the adulterous heart of the church, willing to pay huge amounts so that they can just get this gift, experience or say they have this calling upon their life and in the process persecute those who are truly called and set apart by God. Black Horse Rider on his way to the north is pointing to a compass. If you go north, it means you are moving forward. In this case, we need to see who the next horse is in Revelation 6. That's verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. The people are in fear of their lives with their heavenly bank account bankrupt. No faith, no love, no peace, no joy, no trust in his provision, but only a fearful prospect of coming doom consisting of the sword, hunger and death all around them. Truly, to do business with God will pay off big time. Matthew 6, for where your treasure is, 
there will your heart be also. I was just led to read as well, um, just the excerpt of a word Father gave me that was called, uh, that's called Come Up. And it's a word that I gave in my devotional called Acts 2.0. And it's just a part of it, but it emphasizes exactly what we've just discussed now. And I'm going to read it. His father says, Know that those will be from your own household, but also out of the household called church. Brother will turn against brother and sister against sister, for their hearts are envious, and they desire the great things of God out of the lust of the eyes and pride of life. But I search all hearts and know the intent of the heart to lavish all I give and spend it on their own gain that they may receive the honor. But I will not share my glory and honor and they will be given over unto a reprobate mind as they serve their own understanding, calling it wisdom, calling it revelation. But they have not heard from me but have eaten from that tree which I have forbidden them from the beginning. Your previous Devo, tree of lights, father of lights. They have leaned on their own understanding and have gone their own way, forsaking the way that leads to everlasting life and peace. Therefore, they will reap what they have sown. They will reap thistles and thorns and shall find themselves among scorpions and every creeping thing, even as you will. As I send you to stand in the midst of them to speak my word that will burn of fire. The tree that is alight with the fire of God. I say the coming wolves will both deceive and devour. We are going to be amazed to see who will stand up against us from amongst us and will covet that which he has given us on our journey. The warning is clear. There will be false signs and wonders that will far exceed what we have seen before and people will flock to it, desiring to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. At the same time, those truly called of God will be persecuted due to envy and covetousness. Those in ministry and who have been called to the fivefold ministry should be aware that as deception increases, so will the persecution. We do not have a spirit of fear, but we have a spirit of love, power and a sound mind. Matthew ten sixteen says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise. Now that word wise in the Strong's is prudent. And Proverbs says, prudence will keep you and will be a crown unto you. Prudence is the ability to know what to speak, how to speak it, and when to speak it, if you should speak. That is what prudence is. It's using the wisdom of God with the knowledge and the revelation that Father gives you. Prudence will keep you. And he says that we are to be prudence as serpents. In other words, I think certain translation says cunning. In other words, check it out nicely before you speak. Don't be so quick with your mouth. Be prudent, right? And it says then, and harmless as doves. Harmless is to be innocent and guileless. Guile is anything twisted or anything that is not authentic. And guilelessness speaks of that devotion. A dove is a, a, a single eye. It has a single eye. It means it doesn't have a peripheral vision. It can only see one thing at a time. He's saying, look unto me. I have one devotion in your heart. Only me. Be as uh, 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 wise as a serpent and harmless as doves in the time that you are in. Be aware and be watchful. The Lord is speaking clearly about the deception of the wolves that will come, both to deceive the sheep and to devour those who are in ministry. Thank you for listening to me. And um, also be on the lookout for the next uh, teaching. I don't believe it will be a long teaching, but I will just speak with regards to the same matter as well. Bless you.